All right, guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now, sometimes you might run across this in animation. Now, in my case, what I've got here is two cylinders, and they both have a shape key applied. Now, what I want to do is I want to drive the shape keys with an object. So in our case, I'm using a cube to drive the shape key value. Very easy. Let me just quickly pause this and I'll show you. For example, when I move this up and down, you'll see that I'm driving the shape keys and it's very easy to set up. So let me quickly reset the scene and I'll talk you through how to do this. So I'm back to the default. I have two cylinders. So if I select the first one and come to the shape key, I can push the value up to one. That makes it go down. I select the second cylinder, that makes it go up. So they're kind of working in polar opposites. So I want this to be tied to one object for animation, just to make life a lot easier. So you can do this with bones, you can do this with uh, curves, anything like this. You can make it a light or a camera or whatever. But in our case, I'm just going to make it the default cube and I'm just going to quickly move this to the left here. I'll quickly jump back into object mode. I'll select the first cylinder. I'll go to the shape key that I want to drive. So in our case, it's shape key one. I'll right click on the value and I'll add a driver. Now I'm not worried about scripted expressions or anything like this. I'm keeping it nice and simple. So I'll change the type to the average value. And you can see underneath here that we have the object. What do we want to drive it with? So in our case, it's the cube. And underneath you have type. So when you move it on the X axis, do you want it to change the value? When you move it on the Y, the rotation, whatever. So I want to move it on the Z location. So when I move it up and down, it changes the value. And that's cool. And so now when I move the cube up, it changes the value. And when I move the cube down, it changes the shape key value. Now I'm working in a value of zero to one. So zero meters or one meters in my case. I'll select the next object. I'll add in a driver. I'll pretty much do what I've done before. I'll be averaged. I'll select the cube to drive it. And again, I'll make this on the Z location. And when I move it up and down, I'm now driving the channel. Pretty cool, but we can take this a step further. Uh, let's say we want to add in something like an object constraint. So I'll go to the object constraint and I'll limit the location. So I won't go above zero meters or one meters. So if you check this out at the moment, when I move the cube, it's a way up here. And I don't necessarily want that. I want to keep the range between zero and one. So you can use something like a limit location, a minimum of zero meters and a maximum of one meters. Now I'm actually going to click effect transform here so now when i move this up you'll notice that i can't go above one meters and when i go down i can't go below zero meters so this is great we can start to build out chains and stuff like this but just for quick purposes what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the start of the keyframe i'm just going to give it a keyframe i'll move it up to one i'll give it a keyframe again i'll then go into the graph editor i'll select the z location because that's what we're working on uh, I'll add in a modifier uh, and let's just do something like a noise and uh, let's put the scale up a little bit and let's put the strength up and let's just hit play. And now I've got this kind of automated animation. Uh, we can put the scale in a little bit so it's quicker. So hopefully you start to see the basics of, yeah, I can use another object to drive animation. In this case, it could be pistons or on my case, it was the puppet. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps. Take it easy.